channel. This is Dr. Oluch again. Today, I would like to talk to you guys about testosterone replacement using the cream method or the gel or the patch. Let's talk about why would one pick this method. So testosterone replacement using topical cream, patch, or gel. Okay, that's the topic for today. So welcome back. Here is the um, question I typically get. Um, once a patient's, you know, labs come back and we've determined that truly they would benefit from testosterone replacement. We go over all the different options there are, and you can watch other videos that I've recorded here in this channel about what different forms of hormone replacement there are, right? We've got creams, injections, patches, sublingual tablets, nasal sprays, we got pellet methods, I mean, the, the, the list goes on. But after discussing the options with the patient, we usually will come up with what method would help most likely bring their lab level up it's most ideal for their home situation and improves their symptoms without giving them excessive risk, right? So those are the things that we're weighing as we're choosing what method is gonna be most beneficial for this individual patient. So let's say we've come up with this idea that for you in your particular situation that the cream or topical method is the best. That could be because that's the option your insurance will cover. It could be because, you know, that's what we think would help you the best. Or maybe you just don't like needles. You don't like injections. You don't want no spray that up your nose. I mean, whatever the reason may be, this is the option that we've picked. So, now, what I see clinically is that when testosterone level needs to go up, usually more than 200 points. It's hard to get these topical creams to do the trick. We can apply it, but a lot of times we find that it will bring the level up to 300 points and for some reason, no matter how much extra we slather on, we can't seem to get it to what we want to get to, which is the therapeutic optimal range. So I usually would advise a patient that needs to get their testosterone level say all the way from 300 to say 800 that I don't know if the cream method is going to do it, right? Even if this is their preference. Because we have to uh, really talk about how far do we need to go up this ladder and to relieve the symptoms, right? We're using labs to help us guide us and make sure that we are optimizing it and not guessing. Right? So if the cream method is the option, one of the concerns that I have with this method is the transference of testosterone to other household members. Okay? So there's been plenty of studies that have shown that women that live with men that are on testosterone cream where they're rubbing on their shoulder, on their back, on their chest um, as their method of treatment end up with high and androgen levels in their blood from the transference. So even though we tell patients, okay, you're gonna put gloves on, and you're gonna rub it on, then you're gonna take the gloves off, and you're gonna go wash your hands and make sure you don't hug your spouse for you know, a number of times. But what we forget is, well, the sink in the kitchen, what in the bathroom, in the bed sheet, and all the other places that you ask the patient that's rubbing this gel on is also sitting and laying on and so on. And a lot of you have children, you have pets that come on you, lick on you. Um, so by the time you're thinking about all of these possibilities and ways and places that you might transfer this hormone to someone that may be in the house that doesn't need it, it becomes, is this really the best option for you at this point? So a lot of times with the cream method, I would really, really reserve it for someone that is probably living alone. Um, it's not likely to be transferring this to a spouse, a pet, a, a grandchild, a, a cousin, or wherever might be living in the house. 
So we can minimize the exposure of that person that you were not meaning to expose the testosterone to. So this is one of the biggest drawbacks for me as far as using this method. But we find that sometimes that is the method that your insurance does cover. So we might have to find other body areas that will, is less likely to transfer for us to rub this cream on. So inner thighs, for example, um, some patients are able to successfully use it there. Behind the knees, we've tried. Um, definitely not the wrist because again, it's just so simple and easy to transfer that. So that is one of the biggest drawbacks that I see um, with the topical method. But the, the second biggest drawback is the fact that when you are using topical methods to replace your hormones, you also have to use saliva testing as your method of measuring to see if the level is optimal. I see a lot of patients rub on topical cream, topical gel, put on a topical patch, and their doctor is checking their hormone levels in the blood. Well, they're constantly going to see that the levels are not optimal and constantly increase the dosage and increase the dosage and increase the dosage because when you rub testosterone on topically, you are delivering it to the tissue. So we have to measure tissue levels of the hormone. We cannot measure circulating testosterone in the blood as a way to measure that because it is not going to be accurate. So I see a lot of times patients that are using the topical method are severely overdosed because the doctor is trying to measure your hormone level in the blood, which is not the correct way to do it. If you're using topical, we're measuring saliva. If you're using injectables, we're measuring blood, okay? Hopefully that helps. So if your doctor has been prescribing you testosterone cream, testosterone gel, testosterone patch, and they've been measuring your levels in the blood, please ask them about this, okay? This is very important. They need to know that the best way to measure your levels is saliva testing if you are doing topical hormone replacement. Hope this has been helpful. If you're confused about any of this, please put a comment in the comment section below, ask your questions so that I can get back to you or maybe I might have to record another video if it is a lot of you that need clarification on this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, but also the free VIP school group, I need you to join. That is where I'm able to go deeper and talk about more topics that I'm not able to talk about here on YouTube because we don't want to get canceled. You know. All right. See you on the next one.